Hey guys, it's James again, and I'm here to demonstrate how to set up an indexed five axis milling operation. So first let's go back into manufacture. So what we need for this is a front and back roughing operation. Just a note for my stock, I'm gonna be using blue foam in my milling. So I wanna use a 3D adaptive clearing. So now that I've opened that, I've created an operation and now I need to program it. As you can see, this little screen on the right hand side, adaptive clearing, then there's five tabs and we need to go through them in order to program the whole operation itself. So we start by adding a tool. We go into tool library and we can add a preset. You can build your own tools in there as well. It's really helpful. So my tool preset has all the feeds and speed settings. So it's just something you want to go into on a later date. So don't try and worry about this right now. So now that we're in geometry tab, I need to change the orientation of my tool. So I can do this by selecting the tool orientation tab. And then that brings up a little selection point for the Z axis point. And I'm going for the X axis line. Once I select that, my tool geometry orientation is gonna change. So do you see that highlighted red box around that workspace coordinate origin? You notice how they've changed in a different direction and Z is now facing in the direction of the X. So I think this is gonna work. So I, I'm gonna bring my geometry back and move on to the next tab. So height is really simple and self-explanatory. Top is where you want your machine to start and bottom is where you want your machine to stop. And also retract is how far you want your machine to come away from the material while it's working. And the clearance is the final area where your machine is gonna to travel to once it's completed the operation. We'll manually adjust them by inputting values into the sections, but you can also drag those border lines. This is just a little tip which I like to do in heights. So I like to start my bottom height as stock top and then put the value I would like to subtract. So now that we're ready to move on into the next section, we're gonna go into passes. In passes is where you can get a little bit technical with your machining process. For example, you can change optimal load, you can change roughing step down and you can change stock to leave. So I wanna give two millimeters on the actual stock to leave itself because I want just a little bit of clearance away from my model so that when I go in for a finishing pass, the stock that's gonna be left over is gonna be extra two millimeters. So moving on into the linking section, I don't think you need to do anything with this at the moment. You can actually leave it as it is and the machine should run quite safely. It's default settings, everything should work fine. With that all being said, everything's done. Your toolpath should work and the simulation should load. What you then need to do is simulate it and watch it. Simulate's gonna show you if you have any problems. It will show you if you crash into your material, it'll show you if something doesn't really work right. It'll also show you where your tool's moving and how much area you have for clearance. And then I'm gonna show you how to duplicate this and mirror it for the back. So you just do this by right clicking that operation and then clicking duplicate. Then it will copy everything over. It'll be exactly the same and you just need to make some slight modifications. Obviously you wanna come in from the back. So what you need to do is you need to change your orientation. You can do it by selecting the arrow for Z and it will flip it automatically. You don't really need stock contours on this section. I'm just using it as a reference so you can see the actual direction of the cut and the area which we're cutting. Then I'm gonna make a slight adjustment to the height and then we're done. And then I'm gonna simulate it and see how it runs. Awesome, the simulation looks really good. The milling seems to be working great. And what's left over is now this nice border between the back and the front. And with that being said, you've created an indexical five axis toolpath. So for my next video, I'm gonna show you how to project the five axis toolpath through a sketch. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked it. I hope it was helpful and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.